Hey all you cool cats and kittens, it's time for round two of Arrhenius and Bronson Lowry. So today's lesson is going to be two parts. We're going to finish off Bronson Lowry reactions and look at polyprotic acids. That's probably enough for today because it's kind of a heady topic. So yesterday, well not yesterday, it would have been Friday, we talked about how Arrhenius, this is just quick review, Arrhenius acids break up or ionize into hydrogen ions and how bases have to have basically hydroxide because that's the only base system that Arrhenius can talk about. But on Friday, what the main point of that lesson was is that it's not so much that the acids break up to form hydrogen, it's that the acids react with water and give away a hydrogen to make a special molecule called hydronium. And then because that hydrochloric acid lost the hydrogen, you have a chloride ion. The recap from Friday is that helps explain bases not with hydroxide. Like for example, ammonia. Ammonia is a good example. Ammonia is a base. And when it reacts with water, it takes a hydrogen away from the water to make ammonium and hydroxide. Okay. So here's the reaction we're going to look at today. What if you have, oh, not that one. That's a scary reaction. Okay. What if you have a base that has a metal? There's a lot of bases that have metals attached to them that when you test them with pH paper, they test as a base. So that means there has to be something going on in the chemistry that makes hydroxide. So just like acids that have a base, your first step is to break away and remove the metal. Okay. Then the second step is to show how the uh, base then takes a hydrogen from the water. Okay. So here's a really good example. Let's say we had sodium phosphate. Okay. Now your first step is you have to dissociate the metal from the, the base part. And, and probably we would also get more information like this has a pH of 11, so you know that it's a base. Otherwise, you wouldn't know really what to do with it. But here's the reaction. You have to break up the, 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 you have to break up the metal from the, uh, the base part. So those three sodiums, they get kicked out, and we're left with the phosphate ion. So that's why writing these reactions in the previous unit was so important. So all of those three sodiums go, they get kicked out. And then now, that's our first step. We, we take this base part, the phosphate ion, and we react it with water. Bases take a hydrogen. So one hydrogen is transferred to the phosphate. We get one hydrogen transferred to the phosphate, and hydrogen is one positive. So if you added one positive to three negative, you would get two negative. And when water loses a hydrogen, you get hydroxide. So that's how this compound, which would be really difficult to try and figure out how it could possibly make hydroxide with the Arrhenius method, because how? There's no hydroxide in there. That's why that second system is superior in that it exchanges hydrogens. All right, let's try another example. So it says we've got sodium sulfate with water. The evidence show that it's a pH of eight. That's higher than that's higher than seven. So we know sodium sulfate is a base. All right, our first step, write out sodium sulfate, okay? Our first step, is to break apart the sodium from the sulfate. So those two sodiums, they get the boot, and then we're left with sulfate. <clears throat> now, if you're not sure what the charge is of sulfate, you can always look it up, or you could say, I lost two positive sodium. That means this has to be two negative. So that's our first step. Now, the shortcut some of you might like to do, because you're going to be doing an assignment on this, like a little short assignment. Um, is cross out the metal and then 
just kind of figure out what the charge is of the thing that's left over. And you're like, okay, I crossed out two sodiums, which are one positive each. That means the leftover thing is two negative. And then you can skip the back end. But if that doesn't make sense to you, then don't do it. Delete it. Okay. So the second step is now we have to show how the sulfate ion is a base. So it's going to react with water. And please don't tell me the sulfate ion gives a hydrogen to water because where the F are you getting the hydrogen to give away? It doesn't work that way. That has no hydrogen. So it's going to take a hydrogen and a hydrogen is going to move over, which is one positive. That changes this to one negative. And we're left with hydroxide because losing a hydrogen what is lost from loses a charge. What it, what it gains to gains a negative charge. Ooh, spooky. Okay. All right. So that, that's the idea. So now we have a full reaction that shows this. Now for the shortcut people, what you could do is skip that first reaction right to negative and just start the reaction right here. I don't mind if you do that. Really, the main idea is just knowing how the hydrogen moves back and forth um, because that's actually what happens with acids and bases. Okay, we are not going to cover that. That's not great to try and figure that out in school right now. So we're going to talk about strong and weak acids real quick. Just, just quite a quick recap. Okay, so an example of a strong acid is hydrochloric acid because it's above the gray bar. It's going to at, react with water to make H3O, right? Acids give away a hydrogen. And it does this at about 100%. All strong acids do that. And that will help explain in tomorrow's lesson about pH calculations. Because the more hydronium you make, the stronger the acid. And in this case, all of this is gone. A strong acid. Really, if you checked a jug of hydrochloric acid and you could look inside it, there would be zero hydrogen bound to chloride. It wouldn't even be there. It would be 100% of the stuff over here. That's really hard to wrap your head around, but that's what our quantitative data seems to show. Now, a weak acid below the gray bar, like hydrofluoric acid, it still reacts with water. It still gives away a hydrogen. But what do you think the percentage is? Oop, fluoride negative. And if you said less than 50, you'd be correct. Most of the time, it is much less than 50%. Down to like 1.2% or less, like below a percentage. So a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of this reacts with water. So you get a teeny tiny bit of hydronium. That explains why the pH of an acid that's strong is so much uh, like a lower number, which is we'll get into the logs tomorrow why that is. And a weak acid has a weak pH because it doesn't make a lot of hydronium. Okay, to end my lesson today, we're going to talk about polyprotic acids and bases. And we're going to take baby steps towards this because this is a difficult concept to teach without you guys in front of me. And I'm so sorry that you guys aren't here. But let's just talk about what that means. A polyprotic acid it has two or more hydrogens to donate. You might have actually seen some of these and wondered why, do, why are we only moving one hydrogen around? A good example, a good example of this is H2CO3. How many hydrogens does H2CO3 have in it? Two. It could potentially give away two hydrogens. There are also polybasics, polyprotic bases. We'll just call it polybasic substances. And they have the ability to 
except two or more hydrogens. Now, what's an example of a polybasic substance? These are a lot tougher to identify because they're always hiding with, with metals. And an example might be, we just did this one, sodium phosphate. They're tough to see because you have to take the metals away. And when I take the metal away from the sodium phosphate, the base that's left over is PO4 three negative. That three negative gives me an idea of how many uh, hydrogens it could take. If hydrogen's one plus and you're three negative, how many possible hydrogens could you accept? If you said seven, what are you doing with your life? No, it's, a, it's three. Okay. So we're just going to end today's lesson with two examples of a polyprotic acid. And I'm going to have one polyprotic acid and one polybasic question on the assignment today. You might have to get help on it because it's kind of trippy, tricky. It's also trippy. It's tricky, trippy. Okay, so let's take a look at H2CO3. When that reacts with water, acids give away a hydrogen, right? The hydrogen goes, whoo! So we get H3O positive, and that's lost a hydrogen. Now, that's step one, because this substance can possibly lose two hydrogens. The second step shows this substance reacting with water again. And if you look, it has the ability to give away another hydrogen. And because it gave away its last hydrogen, now it has none, and its charge is even more negative. So that's a polyprotic acid. It can give away as many hydrogens as it has. Now, there are some nuancy rules, but we're going to leave that for Chem 30. We're just trying to give you guys the basics with this online learning stuff at home. Now, let's say you had a polybasic substance. Na2SO4. Bases start with one extra step. Well, you have to get rid of the metals first. So we have to show the metals breaking apart, and then we're going to take the SO4 and react it. Now, a question for you, what's the charge of SO4? Answer is 2 negative. So we could possibly add two waters to this. Now, to, I'm going to leave the shortcuts for tomorrow, but there's some shortcuts. You can do this in one step. So the hydrogen is taken by the sulfate, and it gains one extra charge, and it makes a hydroxide ion. Now, guess what? There's a second step, because this substance has the ability to accept one more hydrogen. So it's going to gain a hydrogen from water. And guess what it becomes? H2SO4. And it makes another hydroxide. So you guys are going to get a five question assignment um, that we would like you guys to do through Floop just so we can give you a little bit of quick feedback. Um, we might just do a key instead, but I want to see how we're doing on this stuff because it's kind of a, writing reactions like this is a big deal for Chem 30. So that's why we're going through it, okay? That, that all acids, even if they're weak, still give away hydrogens. It just doesn't happen very much with weak acids. Okay, guys, it's a bit of a long video, but hopefully that helps with learning this stuff.